It's the finale of Black History Month, but not Black History. Not at all, honey. Uh, as a matter of fact, next month, Women's History Month, we're going to be talking about more Black women. Huzzah. Uh, I'll meet you there. But in the meantime, let's talk about our sister, Mary Louise Brown. Did I uh, pull up her? Yes, I did. You see how I just, that is not what I said to play. Stop the share because that's not what I clicked. I clicked this one. Why are you not sharing what I clicked? This is disrespectful. There we go. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you do what I asked you to do? Anyway, who cares? Whatever, honey. Mary Louise Brown, the sickening girl, honey, whose picture I could not find to save my life, um, was born in, 19, in, in, in 1968, honey, and had done, died in 1918, 27. She was a physician and a teacher who devoted over 25 years of her life to servicing the Black community of Washington, D.C. Brown was the first African-American woman to receive a wartime medal commission when she joined the Red Cross in 1918 during World War I. Brown graduated from the Howard University College of Medicine and uh, commingled her teaching career at Black community high schools and normal schools with a medical career, often providing medical care for free. Let's go to the early life, honey. Brown was born the year I had done told you already in Baltimore, Maryland, and raised in a family with eight other siblings. Her father, John Mifflin Brown, who is this man right here? I don't know why we can't find a picture of Mary, uh, uh, Mary Louise, but we can find a picture of her daddy. But anyway, it is him. He was a bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the AME, honey as he was frequently reassigned to different churches and was involved in the establishment of various educational and social institutions in the South, the family frequently moved. The children were talented and raised in the spirit of post-Civil War reconstruction. New opportunities for African-Americans arose and along with her brothers and sisters, Mary Brown sought a professional career. In the 1880s, Brown graduated from the normal school for colored girls, honey. It was just, it was fine. It was just a normal school uh, for colored girls uh, who consider suicide when the rainbow wasn't enough. In Washington, D.C., which, as with every normal school of the time, which, child, it's to train high schools to be teach, high school graduates to be teachers. I had no idea. Um, provided an opportunity girl to begin teaching in the city schools brown started teaching english at the high school child in uh the city's black community now let's get over to her medical career why didn't i make myself bigger because i'm a criminal while teaching during the day brown attended evening classes at the historically black howard university on t she graduated from a normal department of the university then, following in the footsteps of her older brother, John Mifflin Jr., Brown had done attended medical college from, from 1894 to 1898, which is astounding. Her graduating class of 1898 produced 32 MDs, three of which were women. In an unprecedented move at the time uh, for women of color, Brown continued on to postgraduate medical education traveling up to Scotland to complete courses at the University of Edinburgh in uh, 1899 and 1900. Upon her return to Washington, D.C., Brown settled, there should be, I feel like there should be a comma there, Brown settled at the 1813 Vermont Avenue Northwest, where she will reside until her death, child, she, she died right there. Brown combined medical and teaching careers, teaching the morn in the mornings and practicing medicine in the afternoons. She devoted over 25 years of her life in service to the Black community of Washington, D.C. At the time, an advanced degree earned teachers higher pay. In Brown's case, her medical degree enabled her to transition from a high school teacher of English to a science teacher at a normal school, which pre precipitated, precip precipitated, okay. I was like, am I struggling here? I was. Uh, a significant pay increase from $650 a year 
uh to one thousand dollars a year which would be twenty thousand one hundred dollars uh, a year and thirty one thousand one hundred uh, dollars a one thirty one thirty one thousand dollars a year in 2020 y'all know i have a uh, number lexia i don't th i don't know if it's math lexia or not but i cannot read numbers it's a it's it's a, it's terrible red cross commission during world war one which is a war that was from uh 1914 to 1918 brown received a commission to join the red cross in france she left for france on march 1st 1918 which is like the end of the war ain't it ain't that what i just said yeah november okay um to care for wounded soldiers the commissions to Brown and other women were lobbied for by the American Medical Women's Association and the National American Women's Suffrage Association, honey, the NASA. Um, Brown's appointment was noted in the media across the country as the first military medical commission awarded to a Black woman. In, 18, in 1918, <laughs> the Red Cross and the U.S. Army commissioned approximately 80 women, only two of which, including Brown, were women of color. At the time, women's organizations advocated for such personnel to receive military service records, as was customary for uh, military doctors of other countries involved in World War I. However, this effort was unsuccessful, and in most cases, including Brown's, no such records were received. Terrible. Social services and activism. Brown played an active role in the Black community of Washington, D.C. Often, uh, off. Brown played an active role in the community, Black community of Washington, D.C. I be trying to hold my stutter in, but it just, it jumps. Brown played an active role in the community of Washington, D.C., often volunte volunteering her medical services. <laughs> She was in contact with leading women's organizations of the day, including AMWA and NASA, which lobbied for Brown's wartime commission in 1918. She was also in touch with Catherine D. Tillman, right here, of the National Association of Color Women Child, um, and later the National Association for the Advancement of Color People, which we all know is the NAACP. Boom. Founded in 1909. Brown died at her home, child, in her home at the address I had done told you about our, earlier on March 9th, 1927, at the age of 59. And my great grandmother was not yet one year old. Um, her death was described as sudden. She just she woke up dead, honey. She was buried at Woodlawn C C Cemetery. Cemetery, Lord. On March 12th, 19, uh, 1927. And that's that's it. That's her whole Wikipedia. And she ain't got no pictures, so I can't show you what she looked like, but I can show you her daddy again. There he is. Y'all can read up on him when whenever you're ready. Anyway, child, that's that's it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for Black History, child. And uh, we celebrate the lives of the people that we have spoken about. John Henry Hale, Mary Louise Brown, who else? Uh, Garrett A. Morgan and Margaret E. Bailey. We, we celebrate their lives. Um, and yes, happy end of February. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.